What's up, witches? I'm your host, Emma, and you're listening to the True Crime Witch Podcast, where I'll discuss everything murderous, mysterious, and downright macabre. Jodie Arias and the murder of Travis Alexander. Travis Alexander was born on July 28, 1977, in Riverside, California, to Gary and Pamela Alexander. When he was 11 years old, he moved in with his grandparents on his father's side, and it was here that Travis was introduced to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is also known as Mormons or Mormonism. Jodi Arias was born on July 9th, 1980, in Salinas, California, to her parents, William and Sandra Arias. During the trial, William and Sandra revealed to investigators that Jodi had mental problems and would, quote, freak out all of the time. William Arias even told investigators that he thought Jodie was bipolar, and a lot of his friends had mentioned to him that Jodie needed help. Jodie herself testifies that she was the victim of child abuse whilst growing up, a claim that has been refuted heavily by her parents, William and Sandra. Let's fast forward to how Jodie and Travis met, and how this chance meeting would turn into the messy public murder trial that Arias' name is most well known for. Jodie and Travis met at a conference in September of 2006 in Las Vegas. The two quickly hit it off and Jodie was even baptised into the Latter-day Saints Church. By February of 2007, Jodie and Travis began dating, with Jodie moving to Mesa, Arizona so she could be closer to Travis. However, by the next month, March 2007, she moved back up to Record, California to live with her grandparents. The pair were on and off lovers for around a year and a half, with a lot of their relationship being long distance as Travis worked as a salesman in Arizona. The pair took it in turns to visit each other in Arizona and California respectively. Travis's friends saw flags in Jodie almost immediately. A lot of them had less than favourable opinions of her and noticed that the pair argued often and Jodie displayed worrying behaviour. Travis Alexander was murdered on June 4th, 2008, and he had between 27 and 29 stab wounds, his throat had been slit, and he had a gunshot to the back of the head. Travis also had defensive wounds on his hands, meaning that he had thought back and most likely was dead when he was shot in the head. Earlier that same year, Travis told friends that Jodie would be coming along with him for a business trip to Cancun, Mexico. The pair planned to leave the US on June 15th, 2008. However, in April of 2008, Travis told Jody he no longer wanted her on the trip and asked another female friend to come along instead. On May 28th, the house where Jody was living with her grandparents in California fell victim to a burglary. One of the items stolen from the residence was a .25 caliber automatic Colt pistol, which was never recovered by the police. Between 1am and 3am on June 2nd, 2008, Jody tried to call Travis but was unable to reach him. After 3am, Jody tried again and was able to talk to him for about 18 minutes and 41 seconds. At 4.03am, Jody called Travis again, however this call only lasted for around 3 minutes. At 9... sorry, at 5.39am, Jodie set out on a road trip to Utah where she rented a car in Redding, California. On her way, Jodie visited some friends before driving to Utah to attend a conference. By the evening of June 3rd, Jodie was apparently setting off for Salt Lake City, Utah. Travis had an important conference call scheduled for the evening of June 4th, 2008. Travis was never able to make that call. Jodie attended the conference the following day, so June 5th, along with a host of different meetings where she met up with a co-worker, Ryan Burns. Burns had noticed that Jodie had dyed her hair from blonde to dark brown and had cuts all over her hands. The conference was over by June 6th and Jodie headed back to California in the car that she had rented. During this time, she made several calls and voicemails to Travis and even accessed his phone's voicemail system. When Jodie went to return the car on June 7th, the rental car worker noticed that the car had been driven 2,800 miles. The car floor mats were missing and the front and rear seats were covered in red stains. 
Unfortunately, the company had the car cleaned before police were able to seize it and conduct a forensic investigation on it. Very stupid. By June 9th, Travis's friends were getting pretty worried after not hearing from him for a couple of days. They went to his house where his roommates said that they thought Travis was out of town on a business trip, so it seemed like nothing was wrong. Once the group of friends found a key to Travis's bedroom, they were greeted with large pools of blood in the hallway leading down to the bathroom. They entered and discovered Travis's body in the shower. The friends made a 911 call and the dispatcher had asked the friends if Travis was possibly suicidal or if anyone had wanted to hurt him. They mentioned that they held Jody Arias as a key suspect. Travis has actually confided in his friends weeks earlier that Jody was stalking him on Facebook and she'd even slashed his tires. During the forensic investigation, police were able to find a digital camera belonging to Travis in the washing machine. Whilst the camera had been water damaged, they were able to recover deleted images from the camera. These deleted images showed Jody and Travis in sexually suggestive poses that were taken around 1.40pm on June 4th, 2008. It is believed that the pair broke off their relationship, but they did continue to have a purely sexual relationship. Police also found the last photograph of Travis Alexander alive, which was taken at 5.29pm. The photo shows Travis naked in the shower. The photographs that came after this one show Travis bleeding heavily on the bathroom floor of his apartment. By July, by July 9th, 2008, Jody Arias was indicted on accusation of a criminal activity by a grand jury in Arizona for the first degree murder of Travis Alexander. She was subsequently arrested on July 15th at her home in California and extradited to Arizona in September. Jodie pled not guilty on September 11th, 2008. She gave several different accounts of how she wasn't involved in Travis's murder, including that she wasn't in Arizona on the day that he was murdered and that the two intruders had broken into the apartment and attacked both Travis and herself. <clears throat> two years later, in 2010, Jodie claimed to police that she killed Travis in self-defence because she had been a victim of domestic violence. Jodie's trial officially began on December 10th, 2012, in Arizona. The opening arguments by Jodie's defence opened on January 2nd, 2013. Her defence lawyers argued that the murder of Travis Alexander was a justifiable homicide that was committed in self-defence. Witnesses testified that on June 5th, Jodie was seen with cuts and bandages on her hands, but told them that these were from working in a bar called Margaritaville. Investigators found that no such bar existed in Wrecker, California. Another key piece of evidence was the 25 caliber round found near Travis's body at the crime scene. This matched the gun that was, quote, stolen from her grandparents' house not too long before the murder. Jodie testified that Travis had become increasingly abusive and violent during their relationship. She even told the court that Travis one day grabbed her and shook her while screaming, I'm fucking sick of you. Travis then allegedly, allegedly body slammed her onto the floor before kicking her in the ribs. Clinical psychologist Janine DeMart testified that Jodie was not suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, nor had she been abused by Travis. She instead stated that she believed Jodie was suffering from borderline personality disorder. On May 8th, 2013, Jodie Arias was found guilty of first degree murder. Out of 12 jurors, five found her guilty of first degree, first degree premeditated murder, and seven found her guilty of first degree premeditated murder and felony murder. After two sets of juries were unable to come to a decision about the death penalty, Jody Arias was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Jody Arias is currently serving her life sentence at the Arizona Department of Corrections at the Arizona State Prison Complex. She started her sentence in maximum security, but it is rumored that she may possibly be downgraded in the near future.